Ask any child in a classroom how the very first humans reached the Americas, and you'll likely hear a familiar tale, one that's echoed through generations. It begins with fearless hunters wrapped in thick animal furs, making their way across a massive land bridge that once connected icy Siberia to what is now Alaska. This long lost subcontinent known as Beringia has since disappeared beneath the ocean's waves. According to the old story, these people continued southward, trekking between towering walls of melting glaciers into a new and untamed world, a place filled with woolly mammoths and endless plains waiting to be explored. For decades, scientists embraced this version of events. It was tidy, logical, and perfectly aligned with the discovery of unique stone weapons scattered across North America, the famous Clovis points. These finely crafted spearheads, dated to around 13,000 years ago, were considered the unmistakable signature of the first Americans a culture of expert hunters sweeping rapidly across the continent in pursuit of giant prey. This Clovis first theory became almost sacred in archeology, span the foundation upon which much of early American prehistory was built. But as science often reminds us, simple stories rarely last. The truth, it turns out, was far more complicated. Over the past few decades, new discoveries have begun to crack the old narrative. Deep inside Oregon's Paisley Caves, Scientists uncovered traces of ancient human DNA that dated back more than 14,000 years. Even more shocking were the human footprints found at White Sands, New Mexico. Footprints that astonishingly date to around 23,000 years ago. This wasn't just an adjustment to the timeline, it was a revelation. These pre-Clovis people weren't supposed to exist, yet here they were, thousands of miles south of the ice sheets, living long before history said they could have arrived. That raised one unavoidable question. If humans were already thriving in the Americas over 20,000 years ago, how did they get here when the North was locked behind an impenetrable wall of ice? The possible answer lies in a narrow stretch of land running through what is now Canada, a place known as the Ice-Free Corridor, and a groundbreaking new study has finally examined it in stunning detail, revealing not just when the ice melted, but when life itself returned. What researchers discovered there may rewrite everything we thought we knew. 20,000 years ago, North America was a frozen alien world, Two massive ice sheets, the Laurentide to the east, stretching from the Atlantic to the Rockies and the Cordilleran to the west, fused together to form a continent spanning wall of ice miles thick. Almost all of Canada vanished beneath this frozen shield, cutting off any possible route from Asia. Then, about 15,000 years ago, as the Ice Age began to retreat, the two glaciers slowly started to part, reluctantly at first, but eventually tearing open a vast channel that stretched nearly 1,500 kilometers from north to south. For years, scientists assumed that as soon as this corridor opened, humans flooded through it into the rest of North America. But an open path doesn't always mean a livable one. A barren wasteland of rock, mud, and glacial meltwater would have been nearly impossible to survive. That's why the real mystery isn't just when the corridor appeared, it's when it became habitable, when plants, animals, and eventually people could truly pass through. And that question, after decades of debate, may finally have an answer. The researchers realized something crucial, Traveling 1,500 kilometers through a lifeless corridor wasn't just a test of endurance. It was impossible without nature's support. No human could walk that far, carrying all their supplies through an empty wasteland. To survive, you'd need rivers of drinkable water, herds of animals to hunt, wood to burn, and plants to forage. In other words, you'd need an ecosystem, not just open land. So, to uncover when this icy passage truly came alive, scientists searched for something even smaller than fossils. The microscopic fingerprints of life itself. DNA. Their journey took them to the narrowest part of the corridor, the final section to thaw as the Ice Age retreated, the region now known as British Columbia in Alberta. There, hidden beneath the landscape, lay the ghost of a prehistoric lake called Glacial Lake Peace, once an enormous, ice-trapped sea of freezing water. The team drilled deep into the sediment at the bottom of two modern lakes, the last remnants of that ancient giant. These cores of mud and clay became time machines, each layer preserving a snapshot of the past. Within them lay traces of pollen, chemical signals, and microscopic fragments of long-lost life. But instead of searching for traditional clues like bones or seeds, the scientists were after environmental DNA, or eDNA, the invisible residue of existence itself. eDNA is the genetic dust shed by every living organism, from bacteria to mammoths, left behind in soil and water through skin cells, roots, waste, and decay. Because DNA molecules carry an electrical charge, they cling tightly to clay and sediment, allowing them to survive for tens of thousands of years. By sequencing this ancient DNA layer by layer, the scientists could reconstruct the corridor's biological history, a detailed genetic portrait of a vanished ecosystem. And what they found rewrote everything. Around 15,000 years ago, 
The ice began its long withdrawal, exposing the land once more. But for thousands of years afterward, this corridor was not a lush highway of life. It was a frozen wasteland, silent, sterile, and nearly uninhabitable. Even as late as 13,000 years ago, right when the Clovis people were thought to have crossed this path, the data showed the region was still dead. The land was smothered under mud, ice, and the freezing, sediment-choked waters of glacial Lake Peace. No fertile soil, no greenery, no animals, nothing that could sustain human life. Then, about 12,600 years ago, everything changed. The DNA evidence revealed the first spark of renewal. Hardy steppe plants, like sagebrush, began to take root in the cold, wind-blasted ground. These were the pioneers of life, the first to reclaim the corridor, and once the plants established themselves, the animals followed. Soon, genetic traces of bison, woolly mammoths, and jackrabbits appeared in the layers, the unmistakable signs of an awakening ecosystem. By 11,600 years ago, the transformation was complete. What had once been an icy desert had become a thriving boreal forest of spruce and pine, the same kind that still blankets much of Canada today. This meticulous reconstruction of life's return to the corridor leaves no room for doubt. If plants and animals didn't appear there until roughly 12,600 years ago, then humans simply couldn't have survived that crossing any earlier. Yet, we already know for certain, people were living in the Americas thousands of years before that date. That means one thing, the ice-free corridor wasn't a passageway at all, it was a dead end. For the earliest Americans, it wasn't an open road, it was a frozen wall. So if they didn't walk through the continent, they must have found a way around it. According to the researchers, by the time the corridor became lush and livable, it was already far too late for the first wave of migrants who arrived about 15,000 years ago, and even too late for the Clovis culture, who spread across the land roughly 13,000 years ago. This realization has forced scientists to look elsewhere for the true path, westward toward the sea. The once dismissed coastal migration theory has now taken center stage. It proposes that early humans were not just hunters, but also skilled seafarers, these pioneers may have traveled by small boats along the southern edge of Beringia, then followed the Pacific coastline of North America. Moving from island to island, they likely navigated what scientists call the Kelp Highway, a rich marine corridor filled with fish, seals, seabirds, and shellfish. While the frozen heart of the continent remained sealed under miles of ice, the coastline offered abundance, a living, breathing route that could sustain entire communities. Still, the key takeaway from this research isn't that the corridor was never used, it's that it opened too, late to explain the people who were already thriving deep inside the Americas long before the Clovis era. The corridor may have served later generations as a green, fertile highway linking northern and southern populations, but for the first explorers, the true pre-Clovis pioneers, that gateway was closed tight. They didn't wait for the ice to melt. They carved their own path, following the ocean's edge into a brand new world. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration into our ancient past, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts below. We always love hearing your perspective. Until next time, farewell.